We're going to look at another concept in notes receivable, and that is whether it bears interest or not. You may hear interest-bearing notes and non-interest-bearing notes. So what does this mean? Well, what is the difference first between accounts receivable and a notes receivable? An accounts receivable is an oral promise to pay, while a notes receivable, that's a written promise to pay where you've signed a promissory note. Accounts receivable doesn't usually include interest, but a note will always include interest. Now, you will hear the terms interest-bearing and non-interest-bearing. Just know that interest always exists. Non-interest-bearing notes is just often a sales gimmick, a way to get you to make a purchase that you're told does not contain interest. But for accounting rules, for accounting purposes, interest always exist. With an interest-bearing note, the interest rate is known. It's principal times rate times time, and it's very easy to calculate. With a non-interest-bearing note, the interest is hidden. It's discounted. So another way, another area where we use the term discount. You need to calculate the hidden interest because it's going, your journal entry to record this will be differently, different. So looking at an example, September 1, 2015, you accepted a 70,000 interest-bearing note stated interest is 12, principal and interest are, rec are receivable in six months. This time you're told it's a non-interest-bearing note, but you're given a different term. Instead of calling it an interest rate, we're calling it a discount rate of 12%, but just know that it discount rate really does mean interest rate. So at the time of the sale, what is your journal entry? With an interest-bearing note, it's very easy. Note receivable, 70000 Sales revenue, 70000 And then down below is calculation of what the total interest will be at maturity. With a non-interest-bearing note, remember that interest is hidden. So instead of recording the interest later, you're going to record the discount on notes receivable as 4200 the notes receivable remains the same so you tell your customer there's no interest but what you're what you're going to charge them includes principal and interest with a non-interest bearing note it just means the sales revenue is less and that is a contra asset to notes receivable at the end of the year you would have to do an accrual entry to record revenue. Four of the six months have gone by, so you rightfully have earned revenue. For a non-interest bearing note, notice it's the same math, but instead of interest receivable, you're removing some of the discount on notes receivable you, you recorded earlier. Interest revenue is the same. At maturity, same calculation. It's just the account names that are going to be different. Interest revenue was the same with this example. You are getting paid more with the interest bearing notes with this example, but in practice, a non interest bearing note usually might have an actually a higher sales price because it includes that hidden interest that you don't want your customers to know about. And this is just a reconciliation of the revenue. Non interest bearing notes offered to increase your sales, but just know that interest will always exist. Interest is discounted from the advertised sales price, and you'll also see interest in non-interest bearing notes payable in another chapter. Same thing, you just reverse the entry. It's just backwards. You'll hear the term effective interest rate. We'll talk about that. It's usually high, it's the actual interest. It's usually higher than the discount rate. So what is effective interest rate? So your interest for six months was 4200 Sales price was 70 minus the discount. So the sales price actually for the product was 65. You advertise 70 because of the interest. Discount rate was 12. Take the 42, divide it by the actual sales price. Here is your 
actual effective interest rate. This is why it's higher than the discount rate. 